Hello everyone and welcome to episode 42 of the James Layton Fitness Podcast. Now in today's episode we're going to be discussing a massive topic within the fitness industry and that is fasted cardio and whether it is superior for fat loss in comparison to fed cardio. And to be fair this has just been misinterpreted within the fitness industry for many many years if not decades. I'm going to try and really clear this up and hopefully give you some concise information which you can then go and apply in the real world. So firstly we need to really take a step back and actually look at the bigger picture. So first we need to realize that fat loss is as a result of a energy deficit over a period of time. So ultimately we need to be burning more calories than we're consuming. This this is the number one rule of fat loss. Without this hierarchy in place, fat loss is not going to happen. So we need to firstly just remember this. So as such, if you use fasted cardio or use fed cardio, it needs to be in the above context. So calories and macronutrients need to be controlled. Otherwise, for example, you could be performing faster cardio every single day of the week, yet if you over-consume total calories, there's not going to be any fat loss. Now, quick caveat, I'm discussing this within the context that weight training is still the foundation of our routine. So ultimately, weight training is still the, the foundation of our routine. Calories and macronutrients are set, and basically using cardio to ultimately burn more calories. So we're discussing whether you'd use fasted cardio or fed cardio within this context. Now let's also look at why people would perform fasted cardio. What sort of advantage are they trying to gain by doing fasted cardio in comparison to fed cardio? Well their perception would be due to the low glycogen levels after an overnight fast. This would therefore result in body fat being the main source of fuel which would fuel the cardio session. However, this is a classic misunderstanding of how fat loss happens. It's important to note that ultimately throughout a 24 hour period your body is constantly in a state of either burning body fat or gaining body fat. So for example, after meals you're going to be gaining body fat and in between meals or when you're sleeping when you're not consuming food, you're going to be burning body fat. And ultimately, it's the net difference between those two which will dictate whether you gain or maintain or lose body fat over a period of time. So you're constantly gaining or losing throughout the day. Therefore, this is just a complete misunderstanding of fat loss that people perceive they can take advantage of low glycogen levels in the morning and perform their cardio there and expect to gain an advantage without understanding that you're in a constant balancing out between the two and it's the net difference between the two. That's the key factor, the net difference between how much body fat you're gaining and losing during the day. Recently there's been a a Brad Schoenfeld study which I believe was either this year or last year and ultimately Brad was comparing fed and fasted cardio. So the key thing here, he had two groups, 20 young subjects and non-obese subjects and macronutrient and caloric intake were matched. So both groups would be in a 500 calorie deficit. This study was performed over four weeks and there was no significant difference between the fasted cardio group and the fed cardio group. And as discussed above, this just doesn't surprise me. With that being said, we need to consider other things. So firstly, we need to discuss whether you can actually perform better during your cardio session if if you've actually got food inside you, or whether you you perform better when you haven't got any food inside you. So maybe you perform better during fasted cardio, or maybe you perform better during fed cardio. Also, do you actually have a personal preference between the two? So the key point I'm making here is There's no significant difference between whether you do fasted or fed cardio. However, personal preference and adherence would be the next big consideration. So, for example, if you have a very busy schedule and, for example, you weight train in the evening and you can only do cardio first thing in the morning and you'd rather just do it on an empty stomach, that is going to be better than if you cannot schedule cardio at any other point. 
if you're within the context where you need cardio to achieve your fat loss goals. So hopefully that makes sense. The next big consideration is, is adherence and ultimately your personal preference. So my closing thoughts and application. Let your personal preference dictate whether you're performing fasted cardio or fed cardio. Remember the hierarchy of importance. We need to be in an energy deficit. We need to be consuming sufficient protein. We need to have weight training as the foundation. And ultimately cardio and decreasing calories are just tools to further the energy deficit. So remember, even if you use fasted cardio and you over consume total calories, you're not going to achieve any fat loss whatsoever. So it needs to be within that context. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you can start applying this within the real world and ultimately just let your personal preference dictate if you use faster cardio or not and make sure weight training is still the foundation of your routine within the context of maximizing on fat loss while also simultaneously maximizing lean mass retention. So if you still yet to download my free ebook, How to Set Up a Nutrition Plan, if you go to James Layton, L-A-Y-T-O-N, fitness.co.uk, you can download that immediately. I'd also suggest listening back to all my other podcast episodes. Looking on my website, I've got over 100 videos, lots of blog articles, and you can also learn more about myself and my services and products on there as well. So that's James Layton, L-A-Y-T-O-N, fitness.co.uk. Okay, thank you very much. I'll look forward to speaking to you next week. Take care.